What is the pathology seen in these airways? On this axial CT of the chest, we see large, dilated airways. All airways are diffusely involved, and the walls are irregular, resembling a varicose vein. The answer is bronchiectasis, particularly the varicose variety, which we will describe later. Now what the heck is bronchiectasis? Well, this is the irreversible, localized, or diffuse bronchial dilation, usually resulting from chronic infection, proximal area obstruction, or congenital bronchial abnormality. Morphologic criteria on CT include bronchial dilation with respect to the accompanying pulmonary artery. This is called the signet ring sign. We also see lack of tapering of the bronchi and identification of the bronchi within one centimeter of the pleural surface. Other associated features include bronchial wall thickening, mucoid impaction, and small airways abnormalities. Bronchiectasis may be classified as cylindrical, varicose, or cystic, depending on the appearance of the affected bronchi. This arrow points to normal airway with normal distal tapering. Cylindrical bronchiectasis is where the bronchi have a uniform caliber. They do not taper, and they have parallel walls. This is called the tram track sign and signet ring sign. This is the most common form, up to about 50% of cases. The next type is varicose bronchiectasis, which is relatively uncommon, occurring up to 10% of the time. There is a beaded appearance where dilated bronchi have interspersed sites of relative narrowing. The most severe form is cystic bronchiectasis. Here are cyst-like bronchi extending to the pleural surface, and air fluid level may commonly be present. The differential of bronchiectasis depends on the distribution. Focal bronchiectasis is confined to one lobe or segment and is often post-infectious or secondary to aspiration. Other causes include post-obstructive bronchiectasis from an endobronchial lesion, such as a slow-growing tumor, bronchiolith, or foreign body, extrinsic compression by a mass or lymphadenopathy, proximal bronchial stenosis, distal post-stenotic dilatation, and last is swire James syndrome. This is a remote childhood infection with irreversible parenchymal and airway damage, resulting in air trapping, bronchiectasis, and bronchial wall thickening. And it's typically focal or unilateral, but multiple lobes may be affected. In terms of diffuse bronchiectasis, there are multiple lobes involved. For central diffuse bronchiectasis, consider ABPA, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, Mounier-Kuhn syndrome, and Williams-Campbell syndrome. For peripheral Upper lobe predominant diffuse bronchiectasis, think of CF, cystic fibrosis, sarcoidosis, and TB. For peripheral lower lobe predominant diffuse bronchiectasis, think of pulmonary fibrosis, including UIP, NSIP, also think of chronic aspiration, immunodeficiency, autoimmune or collagen vascular diseases, alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency as well. A few more. For peripheral middle lobe diffuse bronchiectasis, think of atypical mycobacterial infections, PCD, aka primary ciliary dyskinesia, and ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. And lastly, for peripheral diffuse diffuse involvement, <laughs> think of post-transplant BOS, bronchiolitis obliterans syndrome. Wow, you know a ton about bronchiectasis now. Please subscribe for more awesome anatomy and radiology videos.